Shalom and welcome to two minutes of Torah. This year's entitled of Aaron Lichtenstein, Ish Emes Part Two. We said in the previous year that Rav Aaron, in all his humility, was totally intellectual, independent, and 100% honest. He was just seeking Emes, and wherever the Sigma would bring him, that's where he would go. I mentioned a few examples. I'd like to just add on a few more. Religious Zionism, he was, of course, the head of the Yeshiva Tezder Gush Etzion, pioneer in the Hezder movement. And uh, at that point, uh, he, the idea of a Hezder Yeshiva was considered, uh, by some, uh, a compromise that uh, if you are not going to learn full time, so at least don't go on to the army only, at least learn something. Rabban had the bold idea that now, this Lachatrin of Ben Torah. Maybe an exceptional person who is going to be a god doll could be different, but a typical Bandara has to do the army like anyone else. Try to set special conditions. He could be together with his has friends, etc., but he has to be with the army. That was a bold new idea. His ideas on Torah Manda, of course, were not simple in a generation where many were pushing Torah only, Torah only. And, uh, Many of his own colleagues also did not agree where he went with Taramada, but that was his understanding, and that's it. And religious Zionism, of course, head of the Hezdi Yeshiva, living in Gush Etzion, he entered the state as a great bracha, but he wasn't with the same uh, level of uh, connection like with Ritzvi Yehuda Kuk. He openly admitted it. Ritzvi Yehuda Kuk would be uh, probably one who gets up and is like, wow, wow, what a bracha, what happened to Dean, that's unbelievable, it's unbelievable. Ron looked at it as a bracha, of course, but uh, not to the extreme uh, that others did. And, but that was his view. Any area he tackled, he just went through it, gave over his view. If it was popular, if it was not popular, it just had nothing to do with where Ron was at. He was simply going ahead and stating his view. So the last point I mentioned, he looked at the state as a great bracha, and as he famously said, the cup, uh, he always has to look at the part of the cup that's half full. And he said, in this case, of course, it's a lot more than half full. But uh, he writes that he, he said that even, that some people didn't always think he was a great Zionist because he didn't uh, talk about it in an extreme way like others did. But he looked at it as a great bracha, of course. But what he said was just determined by one thing, how he saw the case. And again and again, you go through any article of his in any area, listen to any sheer, it's just giving over MS. And even the amount of time that he took to give over MS, the sheer rim of his, that went for hours. That's not popular necessarily. Didn't matter. He was aiming to give a high level sheer in Gemara, in Lambda, to so see how, whatever it may be. Popular or not, that's just not his goal. You need to work for Torah. If it means sitting in Shia for two and a half hours, then that's what you must do. And a Sicha, which is more hashkaf, it should be lighter and easier. And you don't really need to work. No, no, you need to work for that as well. And if it means listening for an hour straight on a Friday night, well, that's, that's what has to be done. There's a man who's just connected to one thing, MS, truth. And that's it. Tremendous, tremendous giant. We should only be able to learn from his amazing lesson. Shalom.